An introduction to carpentry plans. These are some of the common drawings that a carpenter would see when coming onto a job site or even using to estimate materials before getting to the job site. And our first drawing here, we're going to highlight a couple parts of it. This right here, this whole thing is called a drawing sheet. In particular, this is a site plan, an overhead view of the land and the building. But in what we're looking at right now is this little breakout right here. And this is called a title block. It's going to have the company's name. It's going to have the the, the, the title of it is going to have the dates on it. It's going to it may even have uh, um, addresses on it. It's going to have the type of plan, if it's architectural, civil, electrical, those kind of things. But it's all, all of that's part of the title block. And the title block is also the first thing you ever read when you flip open a set of plans, to make, mostly to make sure you're in the right place. Another part here is the revision block. This is the upper part of this title block. And there's always changes being made. And this is where you record the who did the changes. And what's the most important part of it would be the, the date right here, where you put in a date. Um, because sometimes these plans can change by the minute. Nowadays, we do all this electronically, and they automatically adjust. But in this particular case, this is kind of the old school blueprint model. Now, a couple things I want to show you here. Before we actually get into the plans and floor plans, we're going to talk about a few lines that you see on an actual floor plan. Each one of these lines actually means something. If you notice this one here, it's kind of a darker shade and it's a solid line, it's an object line. An object line is just that. It is the outer edges of what you see of an actual object. Whether in this case it's a wall or a door or a window, it's the actual object itself. This here would be a light symbol with a fan. Um, and it's, it's just a, it's a symbol for it. Um, and versus some of the different lines, like here we have an extension line and it becomes part of the dimensions, but it literally does that. It extends from the outside of the object, and there's a space in here where it's not touching, and it brings out so that you can see the actual dimensions, and it, it highlights it down here, a dimension line. A couple other lines we want to look at, a uh, center line. Center lines are extremely important because we use center lines to locate any object in a building. We don't draw to the edge of the door or the edge of a wall. Uh, we draw from centers to centers. Especially doors and windows, you'll see there's always centers. Centers are marked because you can. I have a, a drawing here, and this door looks like it's about two and a half feet long. But when you actually go to buy it, the specifications may specify a different size. So, irregardless of what size you end up with from the original drawing, you know where the center of it's located. Over here on the right top, we have what's called a hidden line. It's the little dashes that you see. And what it's going to show is an object that's not readily available from this overhead view, but it is of importance in this in this drawing so that you know that it is hidden behind something else. Uh, one more draw line that I want to show you is this cutting plane right here. And literally what it is, and we'll blow up one in a couple slides later, but you literally slice through this section. There's a window here, and it's slicing through the window in the wall. And a little bit later, we'll blow it up and show you some details looking at it from a different angle. If you see these arrows are pointing in that direction, so it's as you're looking from it from the right to the left is how you'd be looking through that plane. All right, this is the kind of plan that um, carpenters routinely, somebody would hand them, but I couldn't build a building from this. It does give me a layout. It, it lets me know, okay, this is a two or three bedroom house. It's got an office. It's got a garage that you draw, you drive into, kitchen, family room, those kind of things. So it lets me know that it's a general, it's a, it's a house plan, but it's not one accurate enough for me to build by. Now this one is considerably more accurate. It's draw, actually drawn to scale and it gives me dimensions. It tells me that this bedroom is nine feet, zero inches this way, 12 foot, eight inches that way. But still, it's good enough to get enough to make materials and stuff. And I can tell I've got a kitchen, tell I've got tile, I've got a bathroom with a tub and a toilet and a sink. But it doesn't give me the locations. I'm missing center lines. I'm missing center line for my doors. I'm missing the locations of my walls and dimensions. So there's really a lot of information that's, that's, that's missing here. This next plan we have here is actually a really detailed floor plan. You can tell I've started to have in all my dimensions. I've got doors, and you can see here, this has got a number that says 2668. That tells me that that door is two foot six inches wide and six foot eight inches tall. I've got some more cutting plane symbols and lines in here. 
I've got lo locations on my, the center line for my window and a size for my window. Um, if I look at this closely, I start figuring out this is actually a duplex apartment. It's just mirror images. When you got lines, this many lines put together, this is a firewall. And there's another cutting planing here that's going to show me a detail call out to give me a, a lot more detail. And if you notice, this one on the right side has a whole lot more dimensions than the left side. These are mirror images of each other. So there's some assumptions you can make that I've got a closet on this side. I've got a utility closet on that side. The size of the door here is the exact same as here. And, then the side, and so the framing and all that is, is the exact same. Now, let's get a little more detail into these call-outs. We notice like the little cutting plane we saw. This is a simplified one. You don't see that a lot. Mostly what you see is one of these two. And what, what you're going to refer to is you can tell that the, the direction this was cut in, this is viewing it from the left to the right. The A here stands for architectural. It'll be the fourth sheet, drawing sheet number here, the fourth sheet of architectural. There's more than one drawing that'll have A on the bottom of it. But when you get to the fourth sheet, the one means the first drawing. And here we have, let's look at the first drawing. As we slice through that building, this is the first drawing on that sheet. And there's our first drawing. As we slice through, we're actually looking down the length of this wall. You can tell this is a wall exterior house. It shows me part of the footer. shows me coming up the concrete slab. It's, uh, it tells me I have wood siding with OSB. These little squiggly lines is, is insulation. And it tells me the type of insulation, R13. That's the R factor or the insulation value of it. It even gives me the pitch on the roof here. And there's several little details. It shows me how the cornice boards come out. And I've got my fascia. And I've got a, I've even got a gutter in this. It looks like a built-in gutter that goes with it. Tells me what's going on the roof decking. But it's, it's just a slice of this previous um, slide. That little number and that section through the wall here tells me to look at this wall right here. So elevation view. Now, elevation view is just that. It's just looking at the building from the side. And this is a giant slice, a, a cutting plane of the entire building, but it's in elevation. So it's, it's going to show me some of the interior layouts. And it gives you most of this type is just designed to give you a feel for the type of the building that you have and what how the layout is supposed to come. Because when you look at one like this, this one gives you the outside elevations and it tells you relevant from rooftop to roof line to roof line. And in this case, you can look and see that this chimney is taller than the spire on, on, top of, on top of this part. So it just gives you some references, shows you uh, double windows. These are garage doors over here on this side, kind of gives you a layout on it. And it gives you, and it almost, it always gives you from cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. Because uh, if you're just looking at a building, you say left or right, you don't know where your point of reference is from. So we always use points of reference from the uh, four cardinal points of north, south, east, and west. Here's another elevation view with a good bit more details. And generally what a carpenter's looking at when he wants to, the first thing he's gonna look for is roof pitch when he looks on elevation. Second thing he's gonna look for, is like here I see some wood columns that are coming in so I can see how they relate. I'm looking on the side and this gives me just a general view then I've got brick on the bottom, although that doesn't look like brick, it tells me it's brick. And then I've got wood siding up above it, tells me some details of shingles, and it gives you kind of a proportional layout, the distance between um, doors and windows. And this is that, um, this is that original um, duplex apartment we were first looking at. Finish schedules. We've talked before about specifications. And that kind of spells out the materials and the, the quality of work. This is a similar part of the carpentry plans. And it's called a finish schedule. And this one was done by the room. So it makes it real simple. It's just like reading a chart. The entryway of this building tells you what type of flooring. And it's getting ceramic tile in the entryway. And it, what, whatever part of the uh, construction process you're a part of, especially for finished carpenters use this, since it's a finish schedule, so if a bedroom floor, and if I'm bidding this thing, I'm wanna, and I'm the flooring guy, I'm going to look and see what types of flooring. So all three bedrooms have carpet, carpet, carpet. Uh, nothing else going in there. So that's all I'm worried about. And if I'm just if I'm looking at flooring all the way across, and I'm, then I'm also looking at 
the bathrooms. What do they got? One of them's got a little bit of carpet, a little bit of ceramic. That tells me probably there's a uh, bathroom. One has a little bit of a changing area that runs right into the bedroom that goes with uh, bedroom one. And then bathroom two, they both have ceramic tile on the floor. So use finish schedules just to tell you some of the uh, different things you need to know and what's going to go where. Uh, the paint guy is going to start looking at the ceilings and he's going to look at walls and he's going to look at trim and he's going to see um, if you're looking at just trim, which room has paint, the utility closets, the uh, bottom trim, which would be your baseboards and your, your door moldings and your window moldings will all have paint on them. Uh, let's kind of look and see the walls, which ones have paint. Just about all of them have some paint. The garage doesn't at all. So when I get ready to make a, um, estimate on this job, I can use this to tell me what's going to be the finished work in each one of these rooms. And that's an introduction to carpentry plans. These are the plans that carpenters would see. They're mostly dealing with floor plans, but as you saw, you really get into some of the details of how components relate to each other. They use elevation plans a lot also to see how things from the exterior of a building relate and gives you key hints that you can't see from the overall floor plan, such as a roof pitch, and some of your exterior finishes and siding. Carpentry plans.